Time is always crucial in debt lawsuits. Brought to you by YourLegalLegUp.com, your advantage if you are being sued by debt collectors. When you're involved in litigation, either willingly as the plaintiff who initiated the suit or unwillingly as a defendant dragged into court, time is always critical, even when it doesn't look like it. This video discusses the ways time can affect your case as a pro se party, especially in debt litigation. You will have deadlines for every single thing that you do. And these deadlines are either obvious, explicit deadlines set forth and given to you by a court scheduling order, less obvious but just as explicit deadlines established by either your state's rules of civil procedure or your own court's local rules, or not obvious or explicit but are implied by the fact that there is a date set for trial or for some other thing that you need to do. A lot of the time, you may think that you have plenty of time and don't need to worry about it. It can be tempting to let long stretches of time go by without doing anything, especially if the debt collector isn't doing anything. Other times you'll feel much more pressed. If you're pro se, time can be especially dangerous and deadly and secretly dangerous because not only will you often need all the time that you get just to do what you need to do and not necessarily know it, but also you will have to figure out what to do and that can take some time. As a basic rule of thumb, just remember this. In litigation, you will pretty much always be either pushing or being pushed. Pushing takes discipline and can be uncomfortable when the other side looks like it might be willing to let you alone. The price of not pushing when you get a chance to push is being pushed by deadlines or the other side. You pay that price in anxiety, missed deadlines, and incomplete or lower quality work. That is an unacceptably high price for a pro se party to pay. Let's look at an example. Courts will often create what's called a scheduling order, which puts down the times by which some things must be completed, but not all of them. You have to count back the days to figure out when you need to get started. When you do that, it's never nearly as long as it seemed. For example, consider what would happen if the court sets April 30th as the de discovery deadline. If you're in Missouri, you figure everything out in this way. Parties get 30 days to respond to discovery. They'll object to everything you've got to figure and you must send them a good faith letter before you file a motion to compel. They get five business days to respond to a motion to compel and it will take you 10 days to write one. Therefore, you must serve your last discovery 30 plus five plus 10 days plus a week for the good faith letter and any time added by the mailbox rule and weekends plus the amount of time the court will give them to give you the discovery if you get the order. These are pretty much absolute minimums. And then you have to consider, uh, you have to set the date um, for, uh, for the motion for hearing and get it heard. And then the court might or might not rule at the hearing. Likely it will take some time to consider the arguments and write an order. Remember, just because one thing is happening doesn't mean that other things aren't happening. You'll have other things you have to do during that time. Don't be fooled. That means you need to file your last discovery at least three months before the end of the discovery period at a minimum. In that example, you have one explicit court imposed deadline and several other implied deadlines in order to get it done. It's up to you to figure it all out and stay on course. Your very first step as a litigant must be to find out what rules apply to your case in general, and most especially what rules control the deadlines in your cases. When it comes to missing a deadline, excuses are for losers. If you've missed a deadline, you must make your excuse and hope for the best, but never forget there's a price to pay. You lose ground either legally or in the eyes of the court or the other side for every deadline you miss. You also add extreme stress to your life and risk to your case if you're always near and sometimes miss deadlines. I can't make that any plainer than that, can I? Find out what you need to do and when you need to do it. Then set up things so that you can do what you're supposed to do. That takes organization and then actually do it. That takes discipline. Why is time especially critically important to pro se parties. Pro se parties in general, and especially in debt cases, must understand the way time works in their cases more than anyone else for three reasons. Your actual lack of resources, your perceived lack of resources, and your lack of experience. The added kicker in debt law cases is that you're moving into a headwind caused by the fact that so few people, whether they're represented by lawyers or not, defend debt cases with intelligence. 
you have to do an especially good job sometimes to get their attention and respect, and that takes time. Most debt defender, defendants or people involved in debt-related litigation, even for, for example, if you're filing a claim for violations of the FDCPA, where you're the plaintiff, don't have much money. An actual lack of resources means that you have to scramble to get the things that you need. From law books to typing paper, from trips to the library to trips to the courtroom and daycare, to mention just a few of the resources that you may not have readily available to you. To offset these actual resource limitations, if you've got them, you must schedule time enough to overcome them. You're also going to be seen as having fewer resources. Does that mean anybody gives you a break, though? Ha! Wake up! This is life in the jungle where predators eat the weak. They will try to take advantage of your lack of resources, and you must learn how to battle the perception of weakness to look tougher than you are. That takes time. Again, it involves a careful use of time. Almost any issue can be dealt with if you have time to figure it out. But time waits for nobody. It has a tendency to run out. You must stay on top of things from the very beginning so that you can do a good job and deal with things that come along because they will come along. Your lack of experience is another issue. It will take you more time to discover how to respond on paper and also how you will need to respond in court. Remember that preparation is the solution for that, and that will take time and organization. You can do this. You'll be tested in discovery because motions to compel are time-consuming and boring, but you'll be tested in many ways. Stay on top of it. Again, you can do whatever you need to do as long as you give yourself time. Protect what's yours, and don't let the debt collectors rip you off. YourLegalLagUp.com